All right, so why don't we go ahead and jump in? Um, and I don't see Robin on the call yet, so we're going to shake up the agenda a little bit. Um, real quick, at the beginning, Tim, you asked for a couple of minutes, so do you want to kick off from there? Yeah, sure. Thanks, guys. Um, just a quick request to keep your eyes open for me. Uh, there's a new charter school in the area. It's called Coastal Waters Charter. Um, they are looking for space. Um, ideally, their, their look, preferred location is somewhere on that sort of southwest side of Great Bay. So basically Durham, down through Newmarket to Stratum or Exeter. Um, they need about 24,000 square feet if they were to get an existing building, but they would also consider somewhere if there was land where like a farm, something like that, that where they could put up modular classrooms. Um, so they're out there. They're just, they're doing this search now for space. They are an approved charter and I just offered to help them out. And I knew this would be a good platform maybe to get it into a few more heads and ears to see if anyone knows of, of space in the area. And they're not wedded to those towns, but that's the area they've been targeting. So if you have something elsewhere, um, in and around the Great Bay Seacoast area, please, by all means, let me know. Do they, do they have to be on infrastructure? I, you know, I don't know how those modular classrooms work, Darren. So I, that part, I don't know, but um, I would I would think they need water and sewer somehow. That's what I think too, yeah. If, we got some spots, you and I can talk. Okay. Tim, check with Michael Barron too, because the um, old Heidelberg Harris, they're off Route 4 on Durham, the north side there. Space. They'd be surrounded by uh, university apartments, however. <laughs> be Larry Lively. Oh, we wrote in their last uh, hazard mitigation plan about the difficulties of being surrounded by student apartments. <laughs> Especially when they overturn your buses, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's um, why I live up. But anyway, okay, thanks for Thank that, you, Tim. Um, if anybody has leads, reach out to Tim um, and we will make that connection. The BEA CEDAR proposal I put on here just for a quick update, we met with the subcommittee last Thursday, I think, um, and walked our way through um, a budget for that, uh, making some assumptions based on things that we talked about uh, with Chris Pappas, some of the things that we talked about with this group about um, how much we were hoping to leave for a, a future unidentified project. Um, so I don't remember the exact number we landed on that for a budget proposal. It was somewhere in the 19, 20,000 um, range, which would leave just over 7,000 left for um, that future unidentified project. Um, that we would hopefully come up with in the next couple of months. Um, so unless there are uh, yeah, any other concerns with that, it seems like based on our last call, um, this is just an SRPC's court to finish pulling everything together and get it submitted to BEA. So any you know, final comments, questions on that? before we move on. Cool, seeing none. Uh, yeah, and thank you again to Sean and Warren and Nancy Carmer and Nancy O'Connor for um, the work that you all have been doing along the way and pulling that together. Um, yeah, it, it's fun and exciting to finally have uh, something that we're about ready to um, submit and uh, Teresa and I will be in touch about you know, any deadlines or anything else that's needed to move that forward. Um, the next item that I had was something that um, sort of popped into my head on Taylor Caswell's briefing yesterday. He was talking about uh, several of the programs that BEA was, uh, BEA slash Gopher were putting together with um, some of the ARPA funding, and he said that you know one of the ones that has sort of gotten hung up with the Joint Fiscal Committee a few times has been um, student debt 
student loan debt relief. Um, and, you know, I asked the question whether or not um, they were looking for any advocacy or supporting testimony that would help get that approval. Um, and, you know, Teresa, I haven't seen anything additional from him, and I'm not sure the extent uh, to which you or Stephanie are sort of aware of this program or, or what is needed. Um, you know, I wasn't sure if that was something that we would want to talk about, if a letter from us would be useful, or if you really think that, you know, just packaging it with some other programs is going to be effective and, and that's that. Um, yes, I had spoken to um, Chase, uh, the deputy commissioner over at, um, deputy director over at Gopher um, mm -hmm. about this. And I think it, getting you the information so that you can share with the CEDAR was it would be important to see what they proposed as well as the comments as to why it was why it continues to be tabled i think the commissioner would like i'm not sure that a letter a group letter would be effective i think maybe more a call tree if there are even a handful of individuals who are willing to call a couple of people there and express their support and their um you know, what are the questions or what are their uh, stumbling blocks as to why um, they're not interested in moving this forward. Um, I know that I've heard a couple things, uh, a couple comments were one was, um, you know, they feel like it would be unfair because you're now, so we're going to forgive student loan now <clears throat> moving forward, but what happens to all the people that have been paying their student loans? they've kind of brought that to the table and that's like a, almost a chicken and egg, right? How are you gonna, <laughs> if we don't move forward with a program like this simply because we didn't have it before and the people that have been paying their student debt didn't, weren't able to benefit from it. I'm not sure what the, you know, how you get around that or how you convince mm -hmm. someone with that kind of stance. But yeah, I think that, let me get the information for you as it was presented to joint fiscal and then if there's anybody here who um, feels really strongly about it and is willing to get a phone, uh, you know, a call in or shoot an email, or you happen to know somebody um, that can maybe bring this up and say, it is important. This is um, a strategy and a tool in our toolbox. And it's worth a try, I'm not saying that it'll be in perpetuity, but you know, if you're uncomfortable with it going on forever, set a timeline, set a, a cap on the money. It's just a tool and it's worth a try. So if you'd like that, James, I'll get that information to you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, if you're able to sort of give us the preview of, you know, the several programs that are in the works, because he also um, suggested that there would be a couple of workforce programs that were also coming um, and that, you know, it looked, sounded like you were trying to package that program with on the next review. Um, so I think having all of that information would be useful to us, especially where we're proposing um, some work in the workforce development space um, to, yeah. to sort of be aware of those down the pipeline. But yeah, a future conversation about whether anybody would be interested in advocating and if so how um would probably be good information all right around. i'll get the student loan debt uh, information and i'll get the it was the oo oo has uh, a couple programs and john nyan he may know about them i know you're doing a lot of work in that space um trying to pilot some programs but uh yeah under oo and the um uh we owe a programs. Uh, they're working with students, uh, different student programs. I think there's an adult learning program and there is some student programs. So yeah, I will get those um, over to you. For the uninitiated among us, what is OWO and WIOA? <laughs> because I'm hearing like the Wicked Witch of the West's <laughs> guards out Sorry. there marching. And... Sorry. Office of Workforce Opportunities. It is the department uh, within BEA that um, manages or works on projects and proposals for um, a Workforce Investment Opportunity Act. 
Um, they deal with our um, dislocated workers, CT, uh, career technical ed programs, disadvantaged workers, student workers. Um, so supportive and linked and partnering with your employment securities, but they work on all of those types of um, grant funded uh, programs. Gotcha. Thank you. John? You're welcome. James, I'm, I'm not sure if um, it's appropriate to, to talk about the workforce now or wait till new business, but uh, I'll let you decide. But I, I do have um, a quick update on uh, a workforce uh, initiative that uh, I'm working on with uh, Commissioner Caswell that is part of his uh, uh, package that he's going to the uh, fiscal committee with. So, yeah, go ahead. The, I was um, in that meeting with John, and he's uh, the commissioner is very supportive uh, enough so that he is bringing it forward. So, um, yeah. Yeah. basically, just as a nutshell update for everybody here, um, two years ago we received a grant from uh, the Hampshire Charitable Foundation, a small ten thousand dollar grant to create a career pathway program, and we uh, linked in with um, Exeter, Winnicott of High School and also the New Hampshire School of uh, Trades, uh, Mechanical Trades. And it was a very successful program. Uh, we had 11 students go through a 12-week uh, training program in uh, different trade areas. Um, and it was so successful that the foundation gave us a second year funding, another $10,000 to run the same program. We decided that we were going to increase uh, the number of students uh, that would be uh, interested and therefore we went from two high schools to eight high schools all up and down the seacoast. Um, we had over 20 students go through the program and they graduated in um, the end of December. It got so much excitement uh, along the seacoast with the high schools that they uh, wanted to continue but the charitable foundation money ran out so I went shopping looking for some money to support a yet a third program. So um, I had the opportunity while I was up in Concord for another reason to meet with the commissioner. And I basically went with the intent that I just needed, you know, a, a one program type of grant. Um, but I spelled out exactly what the program was all about, how it uh, tied in with the apprenticeship program, how it uh, really got um, young students involved in understanding the trades. Um, and um, the commissioner was very interested. So long story short, um, he asked me to put together a very uh, two-page proposal, which I did. He uh, told me to put it together uh, within 24 hours, which I did. Um, and um, he then told me that to use a three-year um, kind of plan. So to put a, uh, a program together for uh, three years, and um, I did that and I gave him a proposal last week for a little over $300,000. Um, so that is part of the package. One of the things that's going to increase um, the uh, program is that we're now not only expanding uh, with more students here in the Seacoast area in eight high schools, but since the uh, New Hampshire School of Mechanical Trades has a second location in Manchester, uh, we will be joining now with the uh, four high schools in the Manchester area to include them into a program. So the plan will be that uh, there will be 40 students in each program, 20 from the Seacoast and 20 from Manchester. Um, and if you multiply it out, uh, you're, you're talking uh, about uh, well over 200 students going through a program if we get, get the funding over the next three years. So uh, I'm real excited about it. Um, and it's uh, something that, uh, you know, we're keeping our fingers crossed, uh, but it sounded really good with the commissioner to get him excited uh, about the uh, proposal. So I just wanted to give everybody a heads up because I know some of the high schools that we've been dealing with um, are in your areas. Um, and also um, I've been uh, meeting with Ann Banks uh, from the apprenticeship uh, New Hampshire and she's on board. So um, a lot of support so far, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to continue the program and also expand it into the Manchester area. 
Great, thanks, John. That's really exciting to hear about. Comments, questions for John? John, question from Reed in the chat. Would we be able to get a list of the high schools that you're working with? Yes. Awesome. So if you can send that, if you have it right now, or if you can send that to me, I'll make sure that it gets sent around with the notes next week. Cool. Other comments, questions for John? It's a longer agenda lengthwise than we usually have, but we've gone through it rather quickly and I'm sort of stretching. So anybody else have anything else to talk about? Teresa? Yes, I do. Yep. Uh, and Stephanie, I don't know if she's got if she's okay down there to um, chime in. We were just uh, we were just told that there may be an opportunity for some funding uh, around uh, rails with trails. Um, it's not for sure. We're looking at it internally. And Tina had asked us. Um, I think Stephanie, you were on that that message um, about if we knew of any rails with trails projects um to bring them forward so i did cover the i covered what i knew of there was uh dairy has a trail and they have some issues um down there with one particular i think it's the highway crossing i know of the seacoast um trail that ties into the east coast trail i know of amherst milford um what was the other one, Stephanie? There was another one we were working on and I, now it just escapes me. But if you know of any rails or trails or bike bed trails, any kind of trail that would um, that we would put into the pot and so that we can look and um, at it about if you have any trail projects active. Was that it? It was, it's not was a huge one? pot of money, but it's a good size. Was there, was there something you're talking about Claremont? Oh yeah, well, Claremont has um, their Heritage Commission trail. Uh huh. So I just ask all of you, if you know of a trail um, project that you are currently working on or that they're in your town, there's a group working on it, please send it forward either to Stephanie or um, myself so that we can um, get that into the list. Um, Tim? Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to clarify, but I think I, that listening to Teresa, I think it's, <clears throat> there's a subtlety when you say rail with trail, meaning that the rail line is actually in place and the trail is alongside it. And if that was an actual opportunity, we, yeah, that'd be great. Because I know we'd love to connect the Rockingham rail trail with the Seacoast Greenway along the south side of Great Bay to, you know, Portsmouth. But it, it doesn't happen often in New Hampshire because of who owns the rail lines, but, um, I, the I difference mean, between I think rails you know with trails versus right. rails to trails. Yeah, it's a conversion. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I think it's anything. It's it's coming out of our Office of Outdoor Recreation. So the opportunity is there for them to consider and look at anything that falls under. Is that right, Stephanie? Is that what you understood it to be? That's my understanding of it. Yeah, from the stuff we got yesterday from Scott. Was it yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. So... I, I think that would be something that I would definitely want to follow up with our transportation yeah. staff because they probably have a lot of those. Yeah, you know, I have one or two things that have been in and out of the SEDS over the years, but those things more often show up in our MTP. Um, Jen, were you going to basically yeah. say that or something to add? Well, I was just going to just confirm so it doesn't have to have active rail. It, okay. It um, could be heritage trail and bike okay. ped or yeah. Yeah. So James saying, you know, would want to confer with our transportation staff was just um, chatting with our transportation staff when you mentioned it. We do have an active project, um, Rochester Farmington, that's a connecting trail that we're trying to work on. Oh, yeah. You brought that up last night. Yes. It's got a meeting coming up. So. Uh, but I know. It you know, depending on how big you're looking at, I know that there have been, um, you know, trail projects up in the north of our region. I know Rochester has been talking about their river walk for a really long time. Um, 
you know, Dover has funded several phases of their community trail, and I'm not sure what's up next for that. You know, and we had that conversation a few weeks ago about how the Seacoast Regional Greenway is a project in and of itself, but could also spawn half a dozen to a dozen additional projects for tie-ins. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we can definitely. So we're talking a potentially up to $2 million. Okay. So like I said, not a super large amount of money, but it's a good, <laughs> it, it, it could get some, some on the board or some wrapped up. It, are there more details with that uh, as far as how the money can be used or is this like very early stages conceptual? Very early stages. That's why I'm bringing it to you. They're exploring, um, you know, what's out there. So we need to know, we don't want to just, you know, those that we're aware of, well, I don't want to just say, okay, these are the ones I know of. That's why I've mentioned it to you. And it's all kinds of trails, anything that would be related to outdoor recreation. Okay. Sounds good. So if you have local examples, get them to Teresa and or um, Stephanie. your touch base or get them to Stephanie and or touch base with your planning commission um, because I'm sure Jen and I and Tim and Sarah are going to go and have that conversation pretty quickly after we sign off here. Yep. Uh, Jen Kimball, did you have a question? Oh, she had to jump. She was going to reach out separately. I think she, what she was going to raise is Salem was looking for. She was texting me because she'd missed the first part of this. Salem needs a pedestrian. There's an existing rail bed and they need a pedestrian bridge. It'd be awesome if they were members of their MPO because we could help them out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I guess that's why she had to raise it, right? But, you know, <laughs> Good for you, Tim. Yep. <laughs> right. So never mind. <laughs> and uh, Jen, I'm, I, Jen knows that through um, sets, probably through prior projects. <clears throat> gotcha. Other general updates for the group yeah james do you see the new face <laughs> i i did you, Sorry, your, I your your new coach business research specialist has been hanging there <laughs> and then it completely slipped my mind i'm sorry go ahead please introduce yourself <laughs> good morning everyone my name is mikhail patel and i'll be uh taking over uh uh from uh, uh uh, Teresa, she's been giving me this excellent uh, pass down and, and uh, handouts. I've I've been going over kind of the uh, the history of the development of the uh, Seaco Cedar, which I understand was the very first one. Uh, so I've been going over the the uh, mind mapping sessions uh, that you've been through. Uh, so kudos to to the team that uh, assembled that. That was that was excellent. And, help answer a lot of questions uh, in a very short period of time. I've been uh, going through your, uh, the uh, agendas and uh, meeting minutes and the history of the uh, proposals uh, that you've been working on. So I'm uh, looking forward to meeting all, all of you in person and, and uh, getting out there. So thank you very much. Thanks, Mikhail. And sorry again for uh, okay. the oversight my brain has been all over the place this morning. No, 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 that's fine. Thank you. Perhaps since we have time this morning, um, we could do a rapid round of introductions of who we all are and, and where we work and who we represent. Sure, let's do that. So I'll start um, and then I'll just hit you in the order that you're on my screen. Um, so I'm James Ferdine. I work for Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Um, I have been overseeing our economic development work for about five years now. Um, you know, we're one of the nine RPCs, um, but like RPC down in this corner of the state, we're also an MPO, so we do transportation work. We're also an EDA recognized economic development district. Um, so that's where a lot of my funding comes through. 
Um, and we have sort of been the organizers and conveners of what has become this CEDAR initiative in the Seacoast for the last yeesh, almost two years at this point, um, which when I say it like that, makes me realize that's like 40% of what I've done at SRPC at this point, yeah. which is crazy. Uh, you know, Teresa Pinto. So uh, Teresa Walker. You're I do. Sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Mikhail. I'm Teresa Walker and I work for REDC, the Regional Economic Development Center in Southern New Hampshire. So our office is in Raymond and I was hired with CARES Act funding to be very part-time to coordinate with groups like this and help develop a resiliency plan. So I worked with REDC for a long time on their SEDS, wearing my other hat, which is with the Rockingham Planning Commission. So welcome. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Looking forward to meeting you. Ben. Good morning, Ben Van Camp with the Portsmouth Chamber of Commerce. Uh, nice to meet you. I think we have a couple of meetings set up in the next few weeks. John. John Nyan, the uh, President of the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce and uh, also the, uh, the chair of the New Hampshire Association of Chamber Executives. Okay. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Sean. The Great Bay Community College. Uh, we have campus in Portsmouth and Rochester. You may know that. And uh, I'm responsible for marketing, business engagement, and workforce development. <clears throat> I uh, barely caught that, actually. Yeah. Yeah, Sean, you were super quiet. Okay, I, I heard, I heard yeah. Sean was uh, in community so, college. Yeah, service I'm area. with Great, Great Bay Community College uh, here in Portsmouth. We have a, a campus in Rochester, and I'm responsible for marketing, business engagement, and workforce development. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you uh, as, as well. I'm looking forward to meeting you. Uh, I, was a, I was a trustee uh, with, with uh, Mass Bay uh, Community College. Uh, so uh, chairman in uh, academic affairs and uh, student success. So I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting you definitely. Great, thank you. Great. Yep. Natalie. Good morning, Natalie Moles from the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Um, one of my roles is to work with small businesses to help with economic recovery uh, from the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. Thank you. Sarah. Hi, uh, Sarah Tatarzik. I'm the one of the regional planners with Rockingham Planning Commission. Um, I'm also relatively new to this group, only been on for a couple months, um, so still definitely learning everything that's going on in, in the economic development world um, of the Seacoast. Uh, one of my kind of primary roles since I started here has actually been working on the regional housing needs assessment. So definitely interested in housing topics that have come up in these meetings. Nice yes. to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. And I know housing is a, and workforce is a, is a very uh, big issue here. So nice meeting you. Paul? Good morning. I'm uh, Paul DeShane, and I'm a project manager with the town of uh, Newington. And uh, I've only been there a little more than a year, so I'm still learning many of the ropes. And the uh, uh, economic development field was only recently assigned to me. Um, I came to Newington after uh, retiring after a 30-year stint as the town administrator in Stratum. And I was also an incorporator and founder in 25 plus year member of the REDC. Um, so um, that's me in a nutshell and uh, looking forward to working with you. Okay, great. And that's that's Tom? That's Paul. Oh, Paul. Paul. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So Paul, I'm going to make a note that you actually get a lot of things done and you have a history of, <laughs> of things done as well. Okay, great. Uh, Stephanie, do you two know each other? Good morning. I'm Stephanie Verdial. I am a principal planner with the Office of Planning and Development. I've been in municipal planning in New Hampshire about 21 years. I was a representative to the central 
um, said several years ago. And you know, now that we have been merged into a BEA, uh, the economic development has really become more of a forefront with some of our planning ac activities. Um, I administer the targeted block grant program to the RPCs, oh, okay. and they do a little bit of economic development with what the little bit of money that they have with the TBG funding. Right. So this is a you know, great opportunity, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. And um, right now, I'm just home recovering, so I hope to see you in the office soon. <laughs> <laughs> Very soon. Thank you again. Yeah, you're uh, welcome. Tar targeted block grant is your zone? Is that Yes, that's the um, the target of block grant is money that the state gives to the RPCs. Okay, eleven thousand um, dollars, twenty two biennium. Um, so that a lot of um, some of the RPCs have been using the the TBG funds to to really kind of bring the economic development um, to some of their communities. Have economic development committees. So we've seen a little little sprinkles of that been formulating the past few years, you know, prior to uh, prior to, to the federal funding that's been coming down. There has been some people out there and, and um, as, as Jen will know that some of the communities are really getting focused on it. And it's just hard with with small communities and, and limited right. funding. So, right. so strength in numbers. <laughs> We're it, is. It, it is. No, so now is, is this is this different than, let's say, uh, uh, economic uh, re recovery zones, uh, if, if, I'm not yes. sure if I'm gonna get this right, but yeah. yeah, okay, some of, the, yeah the, the TVG is is not a lot of money. So they're, they really, you know, they're they're really kind of strapped with, with how much they're able to do with the TVG money okay. for some of these communities that are starting their economic development committees and, and things like that. So it, it is different. It's, it's just the communities in these, um, the regional planning commissions in, in their regions, some of these communities are just starting off on, you know, on, to make their own communities. It's not, um, they may be in some of these the zones, um, but just very, very preliminarily work with some of those, these smaller communities that are using the TBG funds. Um, regional planning staff is helping them out to organize those types of things. Okay, excellent, excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. John? Good. So, Good morning. Uh, I'm Jen Sizz. I'm director at Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Um, and James gave you a fantastic overview of what we do here at Stratford Regional Planning. Um, but just in terms of geography, we cover um, the Tri Cities, the Dover, Rochester, Summersworth uh, area, um, up into uh, Brookfield, Wakefield, in Carroll County, and a few towns in Rockingham County to the south of us. Okay, thank you very much. Was my name called? Yep. Hi, uh, Warren Daniel, uh, halftime business advisor for the New Hampshire Small Business Development Center. Mikael, you and I are meeting, I believe, next week or the week after. Um, SBDC, right. um, I'm the former regional director, and I've, I switched jobs with somebody who took over that position because I went halftime. We help small businesses every day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure meeting you. Darren. Ah, hello. Uh, Darren Winham, Economic Development, Town of Exeter, uh, one of the original OGs of uh, this group with James and Robin and what have you. Um, and Mikhail and I met uh, last week. I had uh, my, my partner and I, my outside venture, uh, Taylor was nice enough to take a one-on-one -on -one meeting with us. He's giving us a lot of good help. And uh, at that meeting, we were trying to get the BEA's impossible uh, electronics to work. Probably nobody can do it. <laughs> I called Mark and begged him to come down and help, and he brought Mikhail with him. I got to talk about the Navy and then find out that Mikhail, I believe you live south of Foxborough? Uh, yes, well. That's a commute, my man. Well, well north, yeah, yeah, Slight, slightly uh, north, uh, <laughs> northwest, so. Well, yes. welcome to the group, Bob. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hopefully for not too much longer. So. <laughs> Robin? Hi, my name is Robin McHale. I am the Economic Development Director for Summersworth. It's a part-time position, four days a week, just so you know. Um, history is I ran the Dover, Portsmouth, and Manchester Chambers of Commerce and the Workforce Housing Coalition as well. And I look forward to meeting you in a couple of weeks. 
Nice meeting you. I'm definitely looking forward to that meeting. Thank you. I hope it's really long. I have a lot to say. Oh, <laughs> no problem. Reed. Hi, my name is Reed Amy. I work for the City of Dover's Economic Development Department. Um, I am also one of the people that has been here since the beginning. Um, I started this job in 2016. I mainly deal with business outreach, communications, um, business retention has been huge over the last couple of years. So um, that's pretty much what I do. So if you need communication with a downtown business, I am your girl. <laughs> Excellent. Outstanding. Thank you very much. Susie. Um, hi, my name is Uzi Duffy. I'm from SRPC. Um, I started out as an economic development intern, and now I shifted into a position as an assistant planner. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, and uh, congratulations. Tim? Yeah, Tim Roach. I'm the director of the Rockingham Planning Commission. Um, do a lot of the same work that they do up at the Stratford region with Jen and James and the team up there. Um, from a geography perspective, just so you're familiar, we go basically from Portsmouth southwest to Salem and then from Raymond southeast to Seabrook. If you made an X across the region with basically everything in the middle, um, the entire southeast corner of the state. Um, a lot of focus on housing, as Sarah mentioned, and then right. um, from us, we're looking a lot at the immediate coastline, coastal resilience, and the potential economic impacts of uh, rising seas, warming climate, and what that could mean for the places like Hampton and other parts of the state. And Hampton. Okay. All right. I'm going to drive out there. Okay. Thank you. Cliff? Oh, good. Mike's on. Cliff Blake. I'm with the uh, Dover Arts Commission, I'm uh, the vice chair, and I actually am sort of seconding um, uh, Jenny, who is the head of the New Hampshire State Council on the Arts, and when she can't attend, I sit in like a fly on the wall and learn all the acronyms that you folks use. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure meeting you. In my experience, economic development is surprisingly actually worse about acronyms than transportation. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, let's see, you have all shifted a little bit. Miguel. Good morning. Um, I'm with the Small Business Administration. I'm an economic development specialist. I covered five counties, Rockingham, Stratford, Carroll County, uh, Cohas, and Grafton. And for the whole state, I cover for veterans and their spouses. So basically, we're helping all small businesses to start or to expand their business and working with different cities and towns on what their needs. Okay, and so so you go all the way up to uh, Coaz? Yes, sir. And, and this, okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Nancy O'Connor. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Nancy O'Connor, um, the Equity and Engagement Planner at SRPC. I round out the economic development team. Um, I work sort of across a lot of our planning functions, uh, public health, uh, recreation, economic development, transportation. Um, and I work with these guys on our economic development program. Okay. Pleasure meeting you. Margaret? Margaret, is that you on the Greater Dover Chamber? Maybe she stepped away for a second. Uh, John Morgan, you want to go ahead? Uh, morning, uh, John Morgan. I uh, am on the Brentwood uh, Select Board and on our Economic Development Committee, our fledgling Economic Development Committee. And kind of just a, a fly on the wall to learn what all these uh, talented planners and others have to um, have to offer. Okay, thank you. Pleasure meeting you. I thought there was one more person, but you shifted again. No, maybe not. 
Margaret, are you back with us? If not, Margaret Joyce is the president of the Greater Dover Chamber of Commerce. Um, yeah, and you, several of the other chambers hop in and out on this call as well. So I'm sure okay, Margaret thank will you. connect with you before too long. And she's with the Dover Chamber? Mm -hmm. Greater Dover Chamber, yep. Uh, Greater Dover, okay. Now they just had a a meeting, right? Uh, uh, Greater Dover uh, economic forecast. They did. That happened. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's at least the group that we have today. Um, but my meeting invite list has swelled to something like eighty people at this point. Um, so we've come a long way from five or six of us meeting in the basement of the Durham Town Hall. Um, I guess we didn't usually meet in the basement. That's just where Mary Ellen's office was. Um, but so yeah, this is the group. Um, I'm sure you'll be meeting new faces as we come in and out. We've got about 15 minutes left and Robin, you had agreed to be on the spot because it looks like you have learned a lot in about two weeks about how cell phone coverage works in New Hampshire. And it sounds like the problems you're experiencing might exist in other places. So um, do you wanna give us a quick recap of you know, the people you've talked to and some of the stuff you found out? Sure, um, I, and I apologize apologize if this is repetitive for those in yesterday's Taylor Caswell call, but it is so interesting and it's hard for me to believe it doesn't touch all of us. So starting at the beginning, um, I do an annual business visitation. I had a program before COVID, a complete visitation program. And now um, it's morphed into an email survey, which James, I'd be happy to share if anyone's, if it's helpful to anyone. Um, I can send that survey to you and you can send it out if you want just as a sample, but I've, I, I've actually done a business visitation survey for probably 30 years in all of my communities. So again, doing it here, I was, I, I'm still speechless. I was beyond floored when this year I got back a written response from a local doctor that he had no cell phone service on what we consider a highly industrial part of Summersworth. There are many large manufacturers and even as or more important, it is the hub and the connector for Mass General to Wentworth Douglas Hospital to Mass General in Boston. And so I was really surprised and kind of clipping forward to it, um, I learned pretty quickly that not only are there no service areas in, for example, six businesses in the city of Summersworth that I know of, but because they all replied to the business visitation survey um, that also our um, surgery center does not have cell phone service. Numerous doctor's offices do not have cell phone service. I later learned our entire school system does not have cell, cell phone service. I learned our industrial park does not have cell phone service. And then even before that, I and it's shocking, I still don't even have words. I learned our first responders don't have cell phone service. And so I'm talking fire, ambulance, and police. All use radio, but they cannot communicate via cell. And it's a particularly problematic on some very specific streets. So to tell you the truth, it has been very enormously challenging. I think the whole first week was to find a person to talk to. And my understanding is I, and Teresa and I have been working very closely together. And again, Teresa, thank you so much for being a partner. And, and James too, you and your team too, thank you very much. But I learned very quickly, or was, it was, I was told that the state did a hard pivot to broadband and it never returned to cell phone service. So when I found, um, and someday I'll tell you how I found the person to talk to, it was like a scene out of a television show for people who I was calling and asking if they could assist on the service or if they were in a leadership or management role. I finally found the woman in Boston who's in charge of the state of New Hampshire. Um, she was 
completely responsive. I don't want to be naive, but I will tell you she was highly responsive. And she told me that she had no filed complaints for the state of New for this part of the state of New Hampshire, although she was very aware that, for example, Concord has enormous hospitals in there, en enormous issues in their hospital where she's dedicated an entire engineering team. So she was uh, quite aware that there are these gaps of service in the state of New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So she immediately signed her engineering team. Um, with I think two or three field people that test wiring cable and other aspects of cell phone service. We had a meeting by the second or third week of all of this. Uh, we met with the team with my department head and they immediately started visiting some of these businesses on the list. And again, the problem seemed to be growing under our feet as she, they're even exploring what I've already reported to them. So um, I have jumped in waist deep with this because I feel that it is the kind of issue that takes um, a lot of follow-up, a lot of very specific detailed follow-up. And I'm learning myself, I don't know anything about this field. I laughed with James two weeks ago and said, I live in flipping Nottingham and all I know is I pick up my cell phone and it works. So what? that's about what I know about cell phone service or in the Seacoast, especially which you don't know yet, Mikhail, that um, many, uh, the Verizon actually dominates the Seacoast cell phone service as a carrier because it actually serves the ocean out to the Isles of Shoals and beyond and the Great Bay and other water areas. So Verizon tends to be more popular on the Seacoast potentially perhaps in relationship to other parts of the state. So anyway, we're uh, working on this. I have had that first meeting, as I say, they are dropping into the field. Um, I reported it to Taylor Caswell, the commissioner of economic, well, you know, he's your boss, what am I telling you? The commissioner of economic development. Um, who's, Never heard of the guy. I understand. <laughs> He's terrific. You're very lucky to be working with the team that you are. I think the world of him. and. Taylor was as shocked as I was. And I, he kept saying he, he thought he was hearing me wrong. And I, I could tell by the look on his face, it was exactly as I felt when I was first learning about it. And I assured him he was not hearing me wrong. And I wanted to be most important, call me a chess player, um, but whatever. I wanted Verizon to know that I was in communication with the commissioner who is the right hand to the governor. So um, I did send an email immediately after yesterday's call to Verizon and said, by the way, I just had a long conversation with our commissioner who, by the way, sits shoulder to shoulder with the governor. And they're quite aware of this issue and are anxious to work with you. And I would say to the commissioner's credit, he was, I believe, shocked. And um, he also seemed genuinely very interested to work to address this issue especially as it pertains to the public schools and first responder mm -hmm. teams in a municipality, um, it, it was just stunning to him. So I, via email, introduced my point people to one another yesterday, and uh, we'll see where this journey takes us. Um, I think, truthfully, I've probably done what I can do other than um, staying on, God forgive me, my grandfather's expression, a dog on a bone but um, I'm not gonna let that bone get too far out of my side, but I do think that it's sort of moved into other divisions of uh, resolution of this problem. But it's right. from my perspective, enormously serious. As I say, the, the commissioner was just speechless and tongue-tied and um, this just can't be. Yeah, this can't be in 1980, less, let alone the 2020s. So um, that is where we are. And what I want to say to everyone, if I may, James, on this call is um, I, I think that we have a door kicked wide open now. And on yesterday's phone call, I was very surprised to see how many communities in the chat said that they also had issues. And so as it specifically pertains to the Seacoast, um, I think that if you as an economic development director are um, engaged or aware of problems with this, it's very important uh, to report it to the commissioner, perhaps through Teresa, and, um, 
and to let our civic leaders know. And as I say, I can, James, too, if it's helpful, if you're at all interested in the business visitation survey that sparked this, I'm happy to share if it would help any of you but I'll also provide the contact information for the people with Verizon. Because as I say, I think this door is open now. And if we all jump in, um, we expand our capacity. And I, I think that we just have to let Verizon know that we're not going to uh, let this issue go easily on behalf of our, as caretakers on behalf of our, on behalf of our business communities. Yeah, and it, it strikes me as somebody with responsibilities to more than just one municipality that you know if enough municipalities you know e even if it's you know just the big cities are, are calling Verizon and saying can you check on Dover's coverage can you check on Rochester's coverage can you check on Hampton's coverage it, that is going to result probably in some more comprehensive work right. by Verizon that would hopefully trickle into you know, the Rollinsfords, the Madburys, the Lees, um, e even if they're not asking specifically. And uh, on, oh, excuse me, James. It, well, my my other question was going to be, I, I guess to either you or um, Teresa, if we know that DEA is planning anything more comprehensive um, region-wide or statewide, to pursue this further, or if that's still in the works, if the best thing for people to do right now is, you know, for us to just send that contact info around with the notes and everybody calls your contact directly. Um, I don't know. Uh, I know the commissioner, we got out of that meeting um, and then he was in meetings for the rest of the, the day. Um, let me ping him on uh, our teams and see um, what his thoughts are. And then I can certainly shoot you something, James, and let you know, um, you know, that there, I know that he was uh, concerned and I just can't say if he's spoken to anybody else. I don't know if he's spoken to Mark and broadband, but let me check in with him and I'll report back to you. Try and get that done today for you. Sounds good. And just before um, I back out of this for this particular moment, um, yeah, I'll read, I'll definitely send you the survey. I'll send it to James, but I just want everyone to know too, and I embarrassed you yesterday, Teresa, by saying how much credit I want to give you, but I just want our world to know that you have been enormously supportive, and I sincerely appreciate it on behalf of all of us. So Always. I tell you, it's that chamber attitude. It's that chamber yeah, you training know, we had. Well, not only that, and I'm guilty, forgive me, James, I'll never live this down. And Mikel, it's important that you know that, not, that I did give my uh, background, but truthfully, I was an international flight attendant for 11 years. This is all about being a flight attendant. This has nothing to do with anything else. It's all about service, service, service. So there you go. Yeah. No, I appreciate it, Robin. Like I, I said, um, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. But yes, you embarrassed me and I had to listen to everybody on the team busted my chops yesterday, but that's fine. That's fine. Absolutely, yes. And we're going to do it again now. So that's good. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm hearing it. They can hear me, Robin. <laughs> um, yeah, so it sounds like people are very interested in that survey, Robin. So please send that over to me. And again, we'll get that around with um, the call notes for people to take a look at. Um, anything else? For the good of the group. I know we're coming up on 10 o'clock. It was a pleasure meeting everyone. All right. Thank you all. Um, and we will see you next week. Great. Thank you. Thank you.